everyone, and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Dude, I got a Dell. Three of them. Three Dell Precisions from the E-Waste Mega Haul we did a couple videos ago. If you haven't seen that, it's right up here. Feel free to take a look. It's an awesome video with a whole bunch of different systems you're going to see featured on the Retro Recall. So, we have three Dell Precision systems. In today's video, we're going to go over these systems to see what kind of features they have. Turn them around, see what they have in the back in terms of I.O. Open them up, see what condition they're in, and see what we're headed for in future videos. But you know what? As always, we have lots to do. Let's get right to it. Okay, here we are with our very first Dell Precision system, and this is a Dell Precision 360. A little different. I know the general design of this era looked the same on the outside, but this one specifically caught my eye just because of the front kind of design that's here. And if you notice in those three systems I had up a moment ago, two of them are of this kind of like darker gray and then there's a lighter gray in the other one so they even had different shades unless you know the plastic's deteriorating i don't think that's the case though because two are identical and one's not and the one that's not is of a different uh, model so i think that this is uh, was meant to be that way so we're going to go over the system real quickly here just to kind of see on the outside and yeah just go right into it so we have a dvd rom drive up top here i mean nothing fancy I, I don't think there's any sort of writing capabilities with it but it definitely uh you know definitely cool to have in the system in terms of the era having a dvd reader and then up down here we have a floppy drive so some of these systems have not been populated with this bay, but uh, in this case, this one is. It looks like we have a couple spare drive bays here as well if you wanted to add more expansion. We have the hard drive LED indicator. We have the front panel here, which, surprise, surprise, opens up, and you do have additional I.O. underneath. We have USB, and we have some audio there. On the front, we have design for Windows XP. Now, professional uh, Windows XP Professional is the license key that's on this particular system. And we have Intel inside Pentium 4. I'll say this about Dells, they're absolutely heavy systems. So on the side here, we have the Dell logo. And it looks like it has little feet on the side here. And what's something I never noticed before. And actually, you know what? Uh, they're worn down a bit. This one specifically is worn down quite a bit. This one, not so much, a little bit, and those two, not so much at all. I mean, overall, it's in great shape, but I mean, theoretically, I mean, my understanding is you can lay them on their sides instead of being a tower, there'd be a desktop type factor that would allow you to, to do that. So, okay, we'll flip it around here even more, and we'll look at the back of the system. So on the back, we have our power supply. We have adequate cooling here. I mean, that's one thing about these cases that we have is lots of ventilation options. We have two, it's interesting here looking at the, uh, the layout here. Usually I, I'm used to seeing the PS2 up top here, but in this case we have two COM ports, we have a parallel port, and then we have our two PS2 right next to the sound card here, or the built-on audio. We have six USB ports, yep, six USB ports. We have an Ethernet jack, and we have looks like DVI only out. Uh, yeah, uh, on the system, which is always fun because I don't have a DVI adapter, so I'll have to get my DVD, DVI monitor out for testing. And then we have, looks looks like a modem down here. Let's take a look on the inside. Now, I know this system is a clamshell design, and yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's just absolutely a pain to work on. I'll be honest. Um, I used to think I liked these originally when I saw them, and then, yeah, anyway, not so much. We have some interesting stuff going on here. I have no idea what that card is. Okay, so let's get a different angle here so everybody can kind of see inside. And it being a Dell Precision, it definitely uh, aims more of the business market. So here's our DVD-ROM drive, our floppy drive all connected here. It looks like it does support SATA. There's no hard disk in here, so... I mean, I could put a hard disk in here to see, you know, if, uh, you know, we do different things with it. Um, for the scope of today's video, I'm just looking at getting these systems posting. 
that's the main thing. If they post, they're worth the time to start investing in to get that going. But for now, I'm just going to uh, work on this. So then down here we have, let's just see what type of memory we have down here. Let's pop one of these guys out. And it's interesting the way they're laid in here. So we have, it looks like one stick of memory, possibly two can select down here. Yeah, two sticks of memory can do here, plus two vertical. So if you look, we have two on the angle here that can actually go in like this. And then up top, we have two additional ones. There we go, so just snap in. So it has four slots. So right now we have 512 megs on this one stick of DDR memory, 333. So I believe there's a gig of RAM that's in here already, potentially upgradable for more, specifically with the fact that you can get away with putting in four of these sticks in the system. I'm gonna get this installed. Now I'm not used to putting it on an angle like this, so I'm just gonna get situated here. Okay, and then we have our CPU that's here. We're gonna find out what that is when we power up the system just for the sake of ease of use. And then here we have our video card and it's quite interesting having this little kind of system set up here for the, uh, yeah, for, I guess holding it in like it just kind of slides up like that and bends over it holds the tail end of the card in okay we'll take this out and kind of see what kind of video card we have in this system specifically where it's only dvi out only so we have an nvidia card is what's there but let's just see if i can get a uh, kind of a, a model number on it oh model p118 is all it says nvidia corporation p118 so there you go. We have an NVIDIA AGP video card P118. So uh, obviously it's, oh, and it looks like, <laughs> look at that. It actually looks like it has an AGP Pro slot. So this is now my officially my second system that I've seen now that has an AGP Pro slot installed in the computer. So I'll pop that back in there just to make sure it's in and put down this kind of little bracket there, which is kind of interesting. I've never seen something like that before where it just kind of holds it down in place like that. And that's it. It just holds the card in place versus using the other side of it. So, okay. And then over here we have this massive card. I said it was a modem just by the ports. Let's see if I can take this out. There we go. We have it out there. I have no idea what this card is. It says Dialogic Corp. I thought it was a modem. It is not. I'm just trying to get an exact model on here, but look at that card. I mean, it is PCI. Yeah, and it's bolted together with screws. If you know what this card is, let me know in the comments. I mean, I've never seen one of these before. Yeah, if you know what this is, please let me know in the comments. I am very intrigued as to what this is. But actually on the back of it, it says, I don't know if you guys can see because of the lighting, it says Dialogic DM slash V480A-2T1 PC. Is this a T1 card? Is that what this was for? You know, is that what this card is? But my goodness, look at that. That's just crazy. It looks like two cards mashed together to form one. I'm going on, on about that long enough, but my goodness, I've never seen one before, so I'm going to go on about it, darn it. <laughs> so I want to know all about it. Okay. So we have that card reseated. We'll put down back down the bracket to hold everything in place in this toolless clamshell design. And our video card has been reseated. So, and so is the RAM. I think we're good there. I mean, there's nothing more fancy to really talk about what's inside the system. I'm just looking to see uh, if there's anything else in here we can we can look at in terms of a better angle. But I'm just looking at the caps because I haven't had a lot of good caps lately. I've been running into some problems with caps, but, and caps, when I say caps, everybody, I'm sorry. I know there's been a few comments of what's caps. Uh, capacitors is what I'm referring to. The capacitors have known to go bad or leaking on the board causes all this fancy damage, but I don't see anything on this motherboard that's implying that any, there's any bad capacitors that I'm seeing here, which is, which is really good news. Uh, we want that. Okay. So I'm going to do is going to close this up. I'm going to get this all put back together. We're going to hook up a DVI monitor to this and see if we can get this up and running okay and we're back all set up on the bench and i just want to provide a little update this card <laughs> this card that i said was a model p118 by nvidia i'm going to do some more research on it but this port on the back which i mistakenly called it a dvi port actually has an adapter from what i read online that allows it to go from this port 
to a uh, dual VGA or dual DVI or VGA DVI, depending on how it is. And I don't have that here. It never came part of the e-waste pile. How dare they uh, not include all the parts? But anyway, it, it allowed me to do some research on this. I do have a Rage 128 Pro in there now. Just again, just while we're doing is testing, we're not doing anything else with the system. I'm gonna move it down for a second here. And we're gonna hit the power button and see if we can get this Dell Precision 360 online. Here are the fans so far. Beep, beep. There we are. Okay, so it says, strike the F1 key to continue or F2 to run setup. So far, so good. Let's F2 to run setup. Everybody, we have post. That's what's important here. Okay, so we have the Intel Pentium 4 processor at 2.8 gigahertz, level 2 cache at 1 meg integrated, which is awesome. So let's just go down here and see what we have. Drive configuration. So we have our disk A is there. CD-ROM device. I mean, that's what they're calling it there, but it is a DVD-ROM. Boot sequence. I mean, that's relevant for now. Memory information. Here we go. So we do have the one gig of RAM in here. That's uh, running in dual channel mode. At one, or sorry, 33, 333 megahertz. And we have our AGP aperture, aperture size set to 128 megabytes. CPU information, there we go. It's just uh, basically just reiterating what we have up here with a little more detail with our bus speed and our level two cache. So I like, I really like this BIOS because it does give you the option to go in and do a lot of configuration. I mean, we're talking about the onboard stuff here. We have the onboard network interface controller on, mouse port, USB emulation, USB controller, all that's on, our serial ports and all that good stuff. So primary video controller is AGP. And again, I wish I was using the original one that came with this, but unfortunately I don't have that adapter. Power management, we always skip that. We don't need to worry about that right now. I mean, it's pretty pretty uh, straightforward. I mean, the system itself is posting. That's what I really like. I really wish we had an operating system to run here. Let's see if I can do something to get maybe a Linux live CD going. Uh, just to see if we can get the system even further to see, make sure it uh, continues to operate. One moment. Okay, so I tried to do some booting here. I tried Lubuntu 22.04, which is supposed to be able to boot on here. I tried Nopix 9.1. That didn't work on here. And I dug through the old gems and I found an original copy of Ubuntu version 5.04. Anyway, I tried all three. It does have a live CD in there and neither one of them worked. So I thought it was an issue with, with the, one of the disks. That's why I tried an original, still didn't work. I believe there's an issue with this DVD ROM drive. Again, the scope of today's video is literally just to make sure these systems can post. And then when we go to do restorations, we can actually go and get this working as if it was new again. All right, so we know our first system, our Dell Precision 360 is working just fine. Okay, we're back with system number two. I am so excited we got one of the three working so far and posting. Again, toss to e-waste. These workstations would be so fun to get up and running. Really cool to be able to do this. Okay, so in this case, we have a CD-ROM drive that's installed here in this particular system. We have a Dell Precision 340 is what this model is. We have another drive that's populated, another floppy drive, so that's great to have as well. Hard drive LED. Uh, and then this is where I said that the Dell Precision type design here, and it actually has Precision stamped in here like over and over again. It's just repeating pattern that's on the front of this, which makes it kind of unique. And under here again, we have the USB and audio connections there. We have the Pentium 4 sticker this time up top instead of the bottom. And then we have design for Windows XP. And on the top, it says Windows XP Professional again for the license one to two CPU version. Let's flip this around and look at the back again. But again, this is uh, this one here doesn't look like it's been uh, mounted on the side. I mean, there's no wear marks on the side here, so this may not have been used in a desktop type orientation. It looks like it's been used uh, as a tower. All right, on the back here, so we have our power supply and again, a different layout again for the motherboard. As I mentioned earlier, I'm so used to seeing the PS2 ports up top in any of the systems I've come across. But where this is a workstation system, it's a, it's a slightly different uh, different setup. So we have our two COM ports, parallel, PS2. This time we only have two USB ports and an Ethernet jack here versus having the six USB ports that we had on the 360. This is a 340. You know, arguably might be less features. And then we have an audio built on audio. And then here we have what looks like a DVI. It is not. 
It is, uh, I already tried, it's a different port altogether, but it is different than this again. So if you look, I mean, we have different connections here, two different, to totally different connections for the video card. Interesting to see what it is inside. Again, I imagine you can get the cable, Breco cables for these, so I'm definitely interested in doing that. So we'll, we're going to go ahead and pop in the Rage 128 Pro just because I know it works and it'll be good to test it with, uh, to see if it posts. Save me some time this time. And then we have another, it looks like an Ethernet port here, uh, Jack. I don't even want to guess what this is until after I boot it up, or at least at the very least, just look inside. Okay, let's so put this around and our good old clamshell design back from the back from the abyss again. Let's open that up. And that's all it is, just uh, two little latches on either side. And then you pull it up like that and then you open it up. Let's give it a different angle here. Okay, and here is our clamshell design Dell Precision Workstation. Okay, so we have our CD-ROM drive that's here. We have a floppy. Again, we don't have the hard drive. I, I'm betting that every one of these systems that I'm going to be opening up that were part of that e-waste haul, most of them, I would say about 75% of them is not going to have a hard disk because of where they came from, uh, which is very smart, by the way. You should be doing that, destroying your hard disks. But let's see here. For memory, we have... <laughs> ram bus memory we have rd ram look at that yeah so in our optiplex video we did on attack of the dells the video right there uh, one of the systems i can't get running because i didn't i wasn't able to locate any rd ram for it and here we are we have some in this system so we have looks like we have two populated and then we have the two chips that are just fillers and this has 256 megabytes of RAM is installed, or sorry, in that one chip. So I imagine it's dual. So we have 512 megabytes. And then on this slot here, we're going to open that up. So I'll pop this one out. And this one here, no, it actually is memory. Look at that. So we have a gig of RAM in this thing. I thought this was going to be one of those blanks. To, I guess my understanding of RD RAM is that you have to make sure that all of these slots are populated. You'd have two, say, populated here, and then these two would just be blanks. So they actually make blank cards. The ones I've come across, including some of my other e-waste finds, have been uh, Dell branded. So definitely nice to have there. Okay, so we're going to open this up here, this little latch system that Dell has, and we're going to look inside the system and what we have for cards. So this board has four PCI and looks like a regular AGP slot this time that we have, where the other system had an AGP Pro, which was uh, which is nice. Again, like I mentioned, it was only my second time seeing one of those. So this one here is, who makes this card here? ATI Radeon Graphics. There we are. So we know it's an ATI Radeon card. I'm not seeing anything here. Do we have any? So we have a serial number and a part number, which you could probably decipher for more information. 2001 ATI Technologies. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but unfortunately we can't use that card because I don't have the Breco cable. I do have a working AGP card here though, however. So we're going to pop that in here. And we have another card here. And the more I'm thinking about these cards, the more I'm thinking these are T1 cards. There we are. We have another one here. One here. Let's see if we have a name on it anywhere. Look at the size of that card. <laughs> it's just crazy. Uh, we have Dialogic Corp again, 2001. Don't know the exact model. I'm just looking at the back here to see if we have anything on the sticker. We just have regulatory information. I don't know if it says Model T1 Span, I believe, on the back here. Uh, D480JCT1T1. So I'm seeing a lot of T1s going on here. So my guess is this is a T1 card. But again, keep me honest in the comments. Yeah, you never know what you're going to find when you get old systems like this. You know, what's been left in them. You know, what's working, what's not working. Now, I will say the other uh, system, when it powered up, the T1 card did light up in the back. You know, we have a functional card so that's uh that's the main thing we're going to put this down get all of our cards reinstalled there there we go we're good to go i am really cool that we have the rd ram because i want to use some of this to test out and pot potentially restore the other system because that optiplex that we had in that video was really cool and then we have our cpu here pentium 4 we don't exactly know what it is yet till we power it up i'm not going through the steps of removing everything from the board this moment our goal is again just to see if this posts and 
I do it this way because we have so many different systems to go through on the channel. If it's worth doing, I'll make a note and state, okay, this system posts, it's worth to continue the troubleshooting. I may not always get it up and running 100% get it restored, but it is valid to go towards the next steps of the uh, of the sequence here. And then so, yeah, I'm looking at the board here. It looks to be in really great shape and there's nothing else to really talk about outside of I'm looking at the capacitors on the board and they all look great, uh, which is wonderful. It just, Dell just makes really good stuff. I mean, it lasts. I mean, this would have just, this was ready to be recycled. I'm really happy that it's not there right now. So we can definitely do more exploration with this. Okay, I'm going to close this clamshell case up and get a monitor set up on the bench. I replaced the video card so we know we have that for compatibility and we'll get this fired up. Okay, here we are all set up with our Dell keyboard and our Dell mouse. It wouldn't be a Dell video with, unless you had the right peripherals. Sorry, monitor. I know you're not a Dell. Okay, so I have the power cord right here ready to plug into the bar. I didn't plug it in right away because I know how these machines love just to power up on their own without uh, hitting the power button first. And I wanted to get this caught on video. So I'm going to plug this in right now and see if it boots up. And it didn't. Okay, this is the power button. <laughs> Nothing. Let's take a look at that. Is it a dead power supply? Okay, and we're back. Yeah, this system is not powering up at all. Now, when I plug in the power to the computer, you can't see it here because underneath the underneath the uh, system here, if I do have the power cord plugged in here, no problem. It is lighting up the board. There's a green light on the board lit up. So I was like, okay, no problem. So I'll take my power supply tester just to see what it is doing. And you will see. I've tested it with the power supply tester and it, I mean, ignore the beeping. That's normal for the four pin not being connected. And it is looking just fine. I mean, we have 11.8 on the plus 12 volt and we have the 11.6 on the minus 12 volt. Our five volts looking fine. Our 3.3 volts looking fine. So yeah, I mean, outside of this, I don't know what is causing it. I don't know if there's a grounding problem here or not. Yeah, so I'm just going to look into this, do some troubleshooting real quickly just to see maybe it's one of the cards I put in. Maybe it's something else touching to see if I can uh, get the system at least posting. Okay, so I took everything out of the system. I even went further than I normally do and tried to check everything to make sure there was no grounding anywhere in the system. This is not the scope of the video. I know a lot of people love to see this stuff and love to go and troubleshoot this. So I'm going to make a note about this particular computer that the power supply is testing fine, but the board is not powering up. Possible it's a processor problem uh, that's causing this. That has I've seen that happen. I resetted the RAM. I mean, so I'm not getting anything in terms of, uh, you know, the fans aren't even spinning up. If I have a RAM problem, usually the span fans are at least spinning, and I'm not getting that right now. So there's definitely some testing I can do with the multimeter and kind of see to make sure to check the rails to make sure there's no damages to the, or damage to the system and unplug some peripheral devices and do some other troubleshooting. Also, we have another one of these systems. I mean, at least we have three of them. So I can test one of the other power supplies on this board to see if it's truly the power supply potentially doing this. As another viewer had mentioned to me that you, it can test just fine, uh, the power supply itself on the tester, but under load or under, under full load, I should say, it just won't work. That said, we're going to move on to another system. I don't like Moving on, not having it working, but unfortunately, it's one of those things that you just kind of got to say, okay, I made my notes on this system. We know system number two, the Precision 340 is not functioning to post. Okay, let's move on to the next system. Okay, here we are with system number three. We have another Dell Precision 360 system here on the bench. Okay, so we have a DVD-ROM drive here as well, so identical to the first 360 and I do have two of these this is not camera tricks. <laughs> there are two of these and we have a bay populated here with our three and a half inch floppy again underneath here We have our two USB and our audio as well Pentium 4 and designed for Windows XP now the license key is ripped off the top here But given the fact that we've already gone through this a couple times pretty confident that this system here is a professional system Windows XP professional on that 
Okay, and on the back here, we have yeah, something interesting for sure. On the back, we have this looks like an adapter of some sort. So I'm just going to remove it from the back. I don't know what exactly it is. Okay, so we have a Globe Trotter Flex ID. So is this meant for like, you know, being able to turn on the system or be able to utilize a device? I know that some systems have, um, you know, USB keys that won't turn on the system. Uh, so you can utilize it without something like this installed in it. So I'm just curious to see, you know, from the wonderful viewers that we have on this channel, what this is. So the model of it, it just says Flex ID 7, and then it says uh, B285D152 and SRB01478. Uh, I don't know what this is. Yeah, so everything I read up online here, I don't know if this is a security dongle of some sort that's utilized to pass information through. I'm not sure. Anyway, if you know what this is, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know. So in the back, we have the exact same configuration as we had in the first Precision 360. We have our COM ports, parallel port, two PS2 sound, and six USB is like the other one. We have a gigabit port, and we have that NVIDIA. It's a P118, and if you look these up, they're plentiful online. And it is low profile as well, except for the fact that the dongle that is utilized, the breakout cable to connect to a monitor is not present, but it, you know, it's identical to this card that we have out already. I'm keeping them out because I'm going to be researching and getting these, um, getting dongles for them, assuming I get this system posting. Okay, speaking of posting, let's get the bench set back up because we already have been through this. We know what we're doing next. Let's take a look at the inside. Okay, and we have our clamshell opened up here again. And so, I mean, nothing fancy compared to <laughs> the other systems we've already seen. I mean, it's the exact same type system. As, actually, it's the exact same system as the 360 we had, but we don't have any memory populated here at all. So I do have a stick of 256 DDR that we can pop in there just to see if we can get the system posting. We have our DVD ROM drive, our floppy drive, a place where our hard drive would be. Again, not here missing. I do like the fact that there's a couple of different rails up here, spare rails that we could use for that. There's shorter and longer ones here, which is great because we, we would need those to put another drive in. The capacitors themselves look great as well, but they did on the other board and we couldn't get it to post. So I'm hoping that we're able to do that. And let's take the card out while we're here because I know that I'm going to need to try to turn it on. There we go. We got the little adapter up there. We'll pull the video card out. Okay, now we have two of those puppies there. And we'll see if I can get my 128 here. Here we are. Pop that in. But we do have the AGP Pro slot here. Now, we don't have any sort of LAN card in here outside of what's built on in, in terms of T1. So we'll just close that up. All right, so we have that done, and we're going to pop in a stick of memory here. I'm not sure if dual channels required for a workstation, to be honest with you. I'm assuming not, or hoping not. Uh, if it is, I'll get that figured out. But I'm going to see if we can get this system set up on the bench with the monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and see if we can get this posting. Let's go. Okay, we're back and we're set up on the bench and we have our other video card that's installed, the ATI Radeon 128. Okay, let's put the power on and hope my stick of memory works and that this system actually powers up. Fans are going, that's a good sign. We have post, Precision 360, love it. System voltage is low, alert, F1 to key to continue, F2 to run the setup. Let's do F2. Here we are, we're back, and we have system number three. We're ending on a high note so far. <laughs> we have Pentium 4 processor, 2.8 gigahertz with a one megabyte integrated cache. Uh, Data is completely wrong, as we can see. I mean, going through the memory information, there's my 256 megabytes of DDR RAM, and we have it. It's just noting that it's in single memory mode. CPU information is just additional information on the P4 processor that we have in here. Being a workstation PC back in the day, this would have been pretty powerful. Mind you, uh, more memory, of course, would have been really good in the system. We have system number three from eWaste posting. So two out of three ain't bad. I think that's a pretty good song, and I'll leave it at that. I wish I had, you know, been able to utilize one of the live CDs that I have here. 
whether it was Nopix, Lubuntu, or Ubuntu. I tried, uh, I've received some advice on the channel. I'm always trying to learn, try to do these things with everybody. And unfortunately I was not able to do those today to fire up any one of these to get this up and running for now. Okay, so what I think we'll do now is we know system number three is posting just fine. So now I'm gonna get the bench all cleaned up and we'll do an overview. And here we are back on the bench where we started and we know more now than we ever did. I'm very excited. So we have the three Dell Precision workstation systems in front of us. Our first system, the Precision 360 with that P118 NVIDIA card requires that dongle. But outside of that and a potential replacement DVD ROM drive will be really, really good. I mean, that's the Pentium 4 2.8 with the one gig of memory already in there. A hard disk, obviously, we need to install. It needs to be cleaned up thoroughly. But you know what? This is fully able to be restored. Very excited for that. So we have system number two right here, which is the Dell Precision 340. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get this system up and running or posting. The power supply looked fantastic in terms of testing. The green light was on the motherboard. I didn't detect any grounding or shorts just from initial testing on the system. So I don't know what's going on there, but the nice thing is we have two other systems, two other power supplies to test on the system. This video card will require a dongle for it to be able to uh, be able to hook up VGA or DVI or what have you. And this system has the RD memory in it, the uh, RAM bus memory. So nice to have that memory. <laughs> Even if we don't get this going, there's a problem with the motherboard or whatever we decide to do, we may end up using this system for a donor system. And I know I have not done that yet on the channel because I'd like to get all these systems. I always believe they can be restored, but sometimes you do run into the problems you just can't fix. So I could use that RD RAM memory in the Dell Optiplex from our Attack of the Dells video. So definitely want to do that. And then we have system number three, which was another success, working just fine, posting just fine. Pentium 4, 2.8 gigahertz CPU. They didn't have any memory, but I installed a 256 megabyte stick that, of DDR memory that I had. So we do know that it does post. We have the exact same video card as we had in the first system, again, requiring a dongle. So we'll have to get that installed. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to on either system. I did test it. I tried Nopix. I tried Ubuntu, which is probably too old for it, but I tried it anyway, version five. I also have another one, Lubuntu as well, and didn't work on the first system. Second system would only accept these two just because of the memory I had installed, but even then it was struggling. It would not load and it froze. So I don't know why we weren't able to get that going. Hopefully in future videos, listening to all the comments, definitely going to try to run live CDs to see if we can test out the systems even further. And whatever this adapter is, this Globe Trotter parallel adapter that was plugged into the back of system number three, I went to the website that's written on here, globetrotter.com, and it doesn't work either. So I have no idea what this is, <laughs> none. So if you know, please let me know down in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. We have two out of the three systems, which we know fully work. These came out of that big e-waste haul, which is just exciting to be able to test all these out and again, bring amazing content to the channel for everybody to enjoy. That said, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It really helps this channel out, helps me grow, and helps me be able to bring all of this content to everybody. Hit the notification button, change it to all. You'll be notified of new content such as this. Leave a comment down below, please. I respond to every single comment that is left. I love the interaction on this channel. Always making new content. Thank you to absolutely everybody who supports the Retro Recall. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.